So we've spoken previously about how OP is caused by overworked adductors and how your OP mechanics, your lock sacroiliac joint, your hip drop, your anterior pelvic tilt, your overpronation, your knocked knees, how these OP mechanics are contributing and exacerbating the overworking of your adductors leading you to develop osteitis pubis. We've also talked about how you can't just isolate one of these OP mechanics. You can't just go ahead and try and strengthen your glute med to fix your hip drop issue. Because as you do that, you're going to create compensation patterns and exacerbations in your other OP mechanics. Because all the mechanics are intertwined really closely together, which is why OP is such a complicated and difficult issue. And the reason why it's so difficult for a lot of therapists and a lot of patients to try and understand is because they're really not grasping one key concept about OP. And that is that OP is caused not by weak muscles, but by weak firing patterns. So what does that mean? Well, a weak muscle is really easy to understand. It's just not contracting hard enough. So you can go to the gym and you can see the muscle's too small. So you go, you start pumping weights, you get stronger, you'll see the muscle grow. You'll see greater definition. You'll be able to go, well, good. I can see there that my muscle is bigger and stronger and is no longer weak. Weak firing patterns are a slightly different story. So if you want to say hit a forehand in tennis, you need groups of muscles to work together in the right times and the right patterns for you to accurately hit the ball back into the court. And if you get any poor timing, if you get one muscle contracting too hard as compared to another one at the wrong time, the ball is just going to fly off the court. And the same thing holds true for your body. When you're running, when you're walking, when you're changing direction, anything that you do that is functional, that is part of your everyday life, is going to involve multiple muscle groups having to work in the right timing, in the right pattern. It's really like a ballet. Everything has its place and everything must work at the exact correct moment. And this is the issue with OP. OP is a disorder of functional weakness. It's not a disorder of muscular weakness. All your muscles are more than likely strong enough individually, but your fascial and your muscular chains, your core fascial chain particularly called the deep front line, is dysfunctional. It stopped working. It doesn't work together. And so you have this issue where your body is almost fighting itself. You can't get the timing right. You can't get muscles to help each other. So they end up fighting each other and you end up with the load instead of going straight up and down your body nice and evenly and dissipated safely. You end up with that load being forced straight into your pubic area and straight into your adductors, which are compensating to try and protect your body from any pain and dysfunction, which of course leads to them overworking and developing OP. And this is the irony of OP. When I test OP patients' muscles in isolation, so individually, they're usually pretty strong. Most OP patients are athletes. They can hold a two-minute plank. They can do 100 bridges and 100 clams. Those exercises are pretty easy because they're isolating their muscles. But if I start testing OP patients functionally, if I ask them to go into a glute, into a yoga pose, or a complicated balance movement, everything starts to break down. And that's because those actions require the body to functionally coordinate with each other. And that's where OP patients fall down. They simply can't get the fascial, core fascial and muscular chains in their body to coordinate and work together. Do a simple test for me. Stand on one foot, so stand up, lift one leg and close your eyes and see how long you can hold yourself balanced without having to put the other foot on the ground. What I think you're going to find for most OP patients is that they can only go a couple of seconds, whilst most healthy people can get to at least 8 to 10 seconds without too much trouble. And this is because with your eyes closed, you're relying on your body to really coordinate, contract all its muscles in a balanced way so you don't tip over. And of course, if you have OP, you're really bad at this, so you tip over. So when I say to an OP patient, you have weak glutes, or you have a weak core, you have weak arches, I'm not saying that individual muscles are weak. I'm saying that those systems are weak. So when you have weak glutes, those 11 or so muscles, depending on how you categorize the glutes, they're not working together. It's not that your glute max is weak. It's that that system and all those 11 muscles aren't working together to achieve the task that they need to of stabilizing the hip and driving hip extension. When I say you have a weak core, I don't mean that your rectus abdominis or your transverse abdominis from a Pilates perspective 
is weak or small. I mean that your deep and superficial core aren't working together to stabilize and protect your spine and to protect your pelvis. It's the systems that are breaking down. It's the functional coordination that is breaking down, not individual muscles. And if you want to fix osteitis pubis, you have to fix these six functional systems. You have to fix your coordination and how your body works together. You cannot isolate muscles and try and strengthen them in a hope of piecemeal, putting the body back together, kind of going, oh, well, I'll strengthen my glutes, then I'll strengthen my adductors, and I'll strengthen my arches, and then eventually they'll all come together and work. It's not how the body works efficiently or effectively. You need to strengthen all these parts of your body together because their strength relies on the communication between each system. So keep watching because we're going to delve in next to the deep front line, which is your core muscular and fascial chain, which is at the heart of all OP.